In today's video, we are going to go through the freeze drying cycles, showing you what they look like on the display. And while we're going through that, I kind of going to give you an idea of what's going on during the whole freeze drying process, almost from the beginning to the end. I didn't start recording until after it had uh, gone through the, uh, what do you call it, the freezing, vacuum freezing cycle, but shortly thereafter, I recorded the whole process to the end, and we took, I'm going to take cuts out from that cycle, and we'll let you see it go through uh, a few things, and at the end, after this video, you'll kind of have a better idea hopefully, of what's going on with your freeze drying cycle. Kind of give you a, a visual to the written description that Harvest Right provides on their website, which is a very good write-up they have on that. So, I need to start out and let you know I'm using version 4.1.26. I know there are a lot more modern versions out there, but I am really happy with this version. I don't need a candy mode. So that is one of the advantages of the more modern upgrades. And so I'm using 4.1.26 and I feel no need to upgrade that. I'm very happy with that, that version. Your version are, might not show the numbers the way my screen shows the numbers. And I still think that there's value in this video for you because even though it might not show the numbers the same way, you'll still get an idea of what's going on during the process from this video and like I say, the write-up that Harvest Right has. Uh, so my numbers are ballpark numbers. Your numbers will be a little bit different, but the process is going to be the same from from high millitores going down and from low temperatures going up, the end target of those will be different maybe on your version of software, but it'll still be the same process. So, and that's all based on uh, your version of software and atmosphere and all that thing. I, just the way they wrote the, wrote the algorithms up on that. So, I hope this video is going to be of some value to you, and uh, when you finish watching, I hope you've learned something, and uh, we'll let, let's get on with it. Okay, so here we go. We're early in the process, and as you can see, the uh, time is 13 minutes and some. And then we got 7 degrees Fahrenheit and 500 degrees Millitor. And what's happened, this is early on in, this, in, in the uh, drying process. And what's going to happen is the temperature is going to rise until the Millitor equals 600, 600 MT, MTOR, Millitors or more. Or the temperature reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Whichever comes first, then it's going to start cooling back down. So uh, we'll demonstrate that here in a fast forward mode.
Okay, so what you saw there was the t as the temperature rised above freezing, anything above freezing, the temperature is rising, the millitors will start rising. And what the millitor what that millitors is telling you once it starts rising is that the gas, the water is evaporating into gas and sticking to your freeze freezer walls. So it goes up above freezing, and it takes a while for the millitors to start going up but once they start going up they go up fairly quickly and uh, it'll continue going temperature continues going up it continues off gassing it reaches the desired temperature 125 degrees or 600 millitors whichever comes first then it starts dropping so we showed you a full cycle there and that was a long cycle as the, as the freeze drying process goes those cycles will become lo shorter and shorter and shorter. And we'll demonstrate that in the next clip. And let me cut in there and tell you what's going on there. So now we're into the final cycle. And I've never actually seen a tr switch over from drying to final dry, but we're going to show it here. And what happened is those cycles have got the previous cycles. This is like nine hours after we, the previous cut. What happened was during that the the up and downs the cycle they got shorter and shorter and shorter and eventually it never got below or stayed very close to 500 and those cycles became shorter and shorter and shorter the temperature started going at some point the algorithm is set up to start going up to about 133 and then it drops until the millitors go drops below 500, then it, then those kick back on and st start heating up again. Now eventually it got to where the millitors never got above 500, and that's telling you that it's about ready to switch over to the final dry. So let's demonstrate that high speed. Okay, I'm about ready to take my stuff out now. Um, I bumped up the final dry time probably about 24 hours. The maximum I'll let you add is 24 hours. So I added 24 hours. And as you can see, we're up to 40 hours now uh, on the run time. And that's, that's what I shoot for, about 40 hours. Over 40 hours, I'm kind of happy. But I look at the 40 hours and I look at the mTORs. And I want to make sure that that's kind of staying steady. If the mTOR is staying steady, then I know that my food is most probably very, very highly likely dry. So what this does in the final dry, for the whole final dry stage, it only fluctuates between 120, I think, 120, up to 135. Then it cycles back down to 120. Then it goes back to 135. And it comes back down to 120. And all the while, while it's doing that, it's still getting rid of moisture. I think, I can't remember what it was on the previous cut of the final dry, but when it first started, 
the mTORs were up about around 500, 480, 470, 490, somewhere up there. And then it started doing these really short cycles of 120 to 135. And every time it does one of those cycles, that dropped a few numbers on the mTORs. And now we're down to 265, and it's running. Uh, I'll let it run a couple times while I watch it and uh, see that it don't fluctuate much, and then I know it's pretty much ready to go. So stay tuned, and we'll do a quick review at the end of this, and then I'll fast forward from now to the end. All right, so we've seen the whole process from the initial drying dr drying cycles when the uh, temperature swings were very high and the millitor swings are very high. When those millitor swings are high, that means there's a lot of moisture in your product. So each cycle, each time up and each time down takes longer to stabilize before it starts going back up and down. As the process went on, we saw that those cycles from low to high got shorter and shorter and the range got shorter and shorter. And once this, the algorithm picks up that your millitors aren't changing much, even though your temperature is getting very high, that's when it kicks into your final dry. And then the final dry, depending how you, you set up your machine, I think I've done mine for 10 hours. That's about the only change I made to my initial setup of the uh, freeze dryer was I added 10 hours, make the final dry 10 hours. And then when I'm going through that 10 hours, sometime during that 10 hours, I'll go in and add more time too so, so that I get at least 40 hours. So we kind of reviewed through that and you saw that happening and uh, you've seen the whole process. Hopefully it, I helped you out a little bit gave you a little bit of uh, visual to what's going on and a little bit of understanding. And I hope that helps you enjoy your freeze dryer. I look forward to seeing you next time.